Hello everybody, welcome to the Quick Speed Channel. My name is Dee and today is video two of a five video series that is all about starting a sublimation business. Today we are going to be talking all about niches and niche selection and what are niches? And the first video was all about DBAs versus LLCs. If you have not yet watched that video, I will link it right here right now and I will also link it at the end of this video. I'm going to be very honest with you. Niches and selecting niches is like one of my all time favorite things. I love talking about niches. I love selecting niches. I love going down the rabbit holes and finding niches, micro niches that are underserved and trying them out to see whether or not I can make an entire website or business on something I just like uncovered. It's kind of like digging for gold and I absolutely thoroughly enjoy it. Which means <laughs> it was very very hard for me to focus in this video because I just found myself like hours into trying to make a video and I've like got nothing because I'm just like off in my own world. So in this video I had to put it on PowerPoint slides because I just could not stay focused on what I was trying to bring to you guys. Hope you enjoyed this format. It is going to be on slides just to keep my brain in order of everything that I wanted to discuss with you. Before we get into the slides and the actual material, I want to talk a little bit about what is a niche. I'm going to bring it to you in a story form and hopefully you guys enjoy this and most of you if you have the entrepreneurial spirit, you're going to appreciate this story. When I was 19 years old, or e well, actually even before 19 years old, I, of course, had jobs. Although I was always fine going to work, I liked kind of like having coworkers and everything. But honestly, every time I had to go report to work, I just felt like something was just like, sucking my soul right from my chest. I just never really appreciated that I absolutely had to be somewhere and work for someone else, even though I um, intellectually understood that that's what I had to do in order to make money to afford my car and gas and, you know, eventually like move on out from my home. But I just hated, hated the idea of working for other people. So if you have that feeling, it is very likely that you are an entrepreneur and you're on board with that. Um, if you don't have that feeling, that's okay too. You could still be an entrepreneur. Anyway, I would spend my weekends trying to build a business. And at the time, I started importing music boxes from China. And I would sell these music boxes at a local swap meet on Saturdays and Sundays. And it was a very limited line. They were I, maybe you, some of you guys can remember this. The copper music boxes. There was a ship and a wishing well and a clown and a merry-go-round. And it had probably 10 different music boxes in total. And I would show up to this swap meet and I would pull my Sundance into a space, one space. I would open up my back car door. I would pull out one table. I would put a sheet on it and I would set up an example of every one of the music boxes. There were like five in the front row, five in the back row, and I would just kind of like wind them up throughout the day <laughs> to attract people to the booth. And eventually people knew where to go to come get one of these copper music boxes. I had all the inventory in my trunk. So when somebody wanted one, I just pulled out that inventory, take the money and they're on their way. And I made amazing money. I made as much money in those two days as I did going to my job Monday through Friday. So I started to give up the job and just focused on this music box <laughs> stand. And little by little, now that I wasn't working Monday through Friday and I was just working on Saturday and Sunday, I started to get, I don't know what it is. Americans have to be working or I don't know what it is but you feel like you have to uh, be working even if your income needs are satisfied through minimal efforts. And that's what was happening. I was having all of my needs met 
on Saturday and working is just Saturday and Sunday. Um, but at the same time, it's like all my friends were working Monday through Friday and they had off on Saturday and Sunday. I don't know. You just get like idle hands, uh, idle hands. So I started walking, you know, around the market. And I came upon this one booth that had just like four or five spots taken with like all these houseware things. And I was just like, man, this is it. Like, this is what I want to do. <laughs> so hopefully, some of you probably know where this is going. So that's what I decided that I was going to do. I am going to stop selling these music boxes and I am going to start importing all these doohickeys. Now, I, it was in, it really was hooks, electrical connectors, okay? These things are like still in my basement to this day. I do not need to buy a cup hook. I will never need to buy a cup hook in my life. I will never need an electrical connector in my life. I have every size, every color, you name it, I've got it. I've got hobby knives, razor knives, the list goes on. I had to buy a van. My Sundance definitely could not fit all this stuff in. I went from a Sundance in one space at this market to a big van, which I called monster van because I bought it used and it said monster van in the windows. And I had to get 10 to 12 tables and I had to get things. They were actually like bread nesters that stacked into each other. And then inside of those were like all these different baskets. And that's not all because of all the work that I made for myself, all of a sudden I had to get to this market at like, you know, 6.30 to set it up. And when I wanted to leave at the end of the day, it took me like at least an hour to pack it and get out. I totally swapped an easy lifestyle for a complicated, busy lifestyle that made less money. That was a niche and I had no idea. Today, I am so laser focused on finding the right niches, testing them out, and if they work, then I go full steam ahead. Long gone are the days where I am going to work five times as hard offering a million different items for sale for less money. I'm not going to do that anymore. I learned my lesson. I didn't learn it at the time. At the time, I had absolutely no idea that I was in a niche, and it took me a long time to learn that lesson. Actually, there was an exact moment in time where I understood what was happening. Um, I'll share that story at the end. Those of you who want to know, like, when did it dawn on me that I was in a niche and I gave up an amazing opportunity, I will share how that dawned on me one day while. I was buying grapes, um, and that'll be at the end of the video. More than likely, you know, if you're not established yet, when you niche down, you will typically earn way more money for way less work. All right, guys, I'll see you after the press. All right, guys, here we are. The riches are in the niches. Work less, earn more. That is going to be the goal. Why niches equate to working less? Now, I did go over that in my example with the music box stand, but how does it relate to sublimating and what I have experienced in my own life as a sublimator? First of all, when you decide to niche, you become an expert. And once you become an expert at something, your process gets so fast. And that means that you will just do everything almost automatically. You can pre-print all of your designs. Like once you have established a line of designs, you can print them out. I have designs in Rubbermaid drawers to keep them nice and clean of any dust, but I start to understand exactly what will sell, how many designs I need, and I can pre-print them. And this is especially beneficial when you just fill up your ink and you wanna print lots of designs and you don't want the stress of having to deal with it print by print. 
Plus, you can pre-make all of your best sellers. And I can say that once you are established, you will get to the point where you know, okay, I sell 10 of these tumblers per week, and it's been like that for the past eight weeks. You can be sure and that it's pretty safe to go ahead and pre-make those designs if they're not custom made. Why niche shops make more money? Once again, you become an expert. And once you become an expert in something, you make less mistake. Once you become totally aware of your product line and you are doing it day after day after day, you just don't have those mistakes. I cannot tell you the last time I had like a ghosted coffee cup or a ghosted tumbler. You buy only the blanks that you need. I mean, that makes perfect sense. You know exactly what you need and you know how to schedule your inventory. You buy only the equipment that you need. If you are only going to do mugs and drinkware, then you can forego a heat press, vice versa. Maybe you know you're just going to do something like baby bibs. You don't have to venture off into mug presses and that will save you money. You buy only the packing and shipping materials that you need. And um, I want to just bring up doormats because I have seen this time and time again. And I was a victim of this once as well. But I have seen so many times on like Facebook pages, somebody finally got their first doormat order and then they're scrambling trying to find a box. And when you go and try to find a box that fits a doormat, uh, that fits a doormat, it can't look like garbage. It has to have a nice presentation. So lots of times at the end of the day, when you have these one-off items, you spend so much time and money looking for a box that it really starts to eat into your profits. But when you have specific products, you'll know exactly how to pack them and wrap them and tape them, and you can have them just ready at the go, waiting for orders to come in. And you can save huge buying in bulk. No doubt, once you know all of these things, you can really plan your inventory of blanks, you can plan your inventory of shipping materials, and when you can buy in bulk, you definitely save lots of money. Your advertising dollars will definitely go further when you are a niche store. And maybe you're not thinking about advertising right now, but once you grow, you really should dedicate a portion of your income to advertising to grow your business. And when you are niche, when you spend those advertising dollars, let's just say you decided you're just going to do baby bibs. When you advertise and spend those advertising dollars and somebody clicks to go to your website, they are going to be met with all things applicable to the advertising dollars that you paid for. So you are going to get a, an extremely targeted customer what if you spend those advertising dollars, the whole, your whole website will be something of interest to them versus when you are offering so many different things. Let's just say you're even like you're offering 30, 40, 50 things. You spend advertising dollars to get somebody in there on your baby bib, but right next to the baby bib pops up like, um, some, you know, weird tumbler that uh, the design has nothing to do with babies, completely different target audience. So your advertising dollars definitely go further when you niche. And email lists, the customer base is highly targeted. When you have your own website, you will be gathering emails. And once you have emails, and it won't take you long, over a course of a year, you might build an email list of 500 to 1,000 emails. Do you know how much money you can make with a quarterly email targeting these people that you know bought from you? And maybe you have some new designs about the niche. Maybe your niche is more about um, a profession. You're targeting firefighters and you send a quarterly email with a new design 
or you come out with a new Christmas firefighter design and you can send it to your highly targeted email list. And that is like the beauty and the magic of things that perhaps you just don't even see that are possible right, right now, but they are possible. And this is how you really start to grow your bank account. Other benefits of niche sites, they are very easy to brand. In our LLC um, video, we talked about pugs and mugs. Let's just say you did decide to just do a niche all about pugs. Well, when it comes to naming it and the colors and all the packing materials and the message, you can be really on point. Like all of the packing materials that you get, you can get like the crinkle paper, maybe it's brown and black and tan and white. When customers open that package, like everything applies to the color of pugs. It's easy to copyright. For those of you that are your own designers, if you are niched down, it is really easy to send a book of your prints or your designs and get them copyrighted so that nobody else can steal them. And on your own website, through all your pictures, you just make sure that it's really clear that this is all copyright protected. It is much easier to rank in Google when you are a niche site. And this is where I don't think that a lot of people really understand the entire 360 view or the back end view of niche sites. A lot of people say, well, I made a website or I put my listing on Etsy and I have absolutely no sales. Not only do I have no sales, nobody's even visiting. I have no traffic. Well, Google, they're always evolving to give their user the best content they think they are looking for. So when you create a niche site, and let's just say it's all about uh, kite surfing, let's say you decided to target the sport of kite surfing, and you start to write in every little description box a different design about kite surfing, gifts for kite surfers, that is going to be extremely relevant content all in one location versus Google thinking that you are just something that they can't really make sense of. In my experience, niche sites are much faster to rank because they are more relevant to the audience. And the other thing about being in a niche site is you can really go the extra mile and give that customer amazing first impressions. You can defeat the competitors with like nice logos and tags and colors that are all on brand. You can just like totally crush the competition when it comes to print on demand. Most people who are ordering that print on demand stuff are just getting some plain old box with absolutely no custom wrapping, no follow-up, no special gift. You can do all of this with niche sites and you can really crush it when it comes to impressing your customer. Once you do that, you definitely build customer loyalty. They are much more likely to repeat their business with you. Can you begin to see the potential? If so, give this video a like. All right, how to narrow down a niche. This is like finding the pearl of niches. Well, first place you can look, professions and work life. I can fill this whole screen with professions that exist. I mean, there are thousands upon thousands. Start to think about that. Who are the people around you? What do they do for a living? Is there anything that you can gain an insight or an inside track on based on people around you? And of course, there's all the sports and hobbies. Aside from all the obvious sports, you know, think about all the other sports, bowling, golf, tennis, hockey, and then hobbies, music, particular instruments, reading, puzzles, gaming, painting, quilting, gardening. There are so many categories even within these sports and hobbies. It's just mind boggling. Perhaps you can have a niche with a slogan. I know we all know just do it, a slogan that Nike brought to life. Is there any slogan that you think should be out there? Nice, quick, short, one-liners, there are also insects and reptiles that people are interested. Then, of course, all of the life events, 
Maybe you want to get into the celebration of birth or expecting moms or expecting families in general, birthdays, anniversaries, graduation, promotions, first grandkids, the great niche, right? Great aunt, great grandpa, great grandma, great uncle, or the godmother, godfather niche, retirement, and of course, memorials. All of these really serve a very important need. When people are going through this, they are looking for the right gift. Now, this is usually very, very personalized niches. So if you are up for that, you can definitely make even more money than just selling regular designs that have no personalization, but it is definitely worth more money and you charge more money. Okay. It's worth more. Therefore you charge more money. And of course, think about any group. Essentially, if there is a Facebook group about this subject, then that is a target audience. Foodies, they're in Facebook groups, right? Vegan Facebook groups. Can you make up funny sayings about vegans? And I'm not saying like to not vegans. I'm, I'm saying support vegans. Can you think of nice gifts that somebody could buy for their vegan family or friends? Hippies, <laughs> that's definitely a Facebook group. Coffee lovers, chocoholics, marathon runners, even sublimators. That is a Facebook group. And I know you're saying, well, why would I buy myself something that I could make? Well, you wouldn't buy it, right? We're in the gift giving industry. So if your significant other wanted to buy you a gift and saw a coffee cup, I don't know, that said, touch my printer and die. Y'all know how we are about our sublimation printers. It could be funny. Your family members may not know how to sublimate, but could give you a gift in the area that makes you laugh. How to get micro niche. A micro niche, what you do is you brainstorm one of those niches. All right, and then you explore all of its categories. Let's just come back here. Let's explore the categories in professions. Well, let's just say even in the military here, what type of categories could we talk about when it comes to military? Well, there's the military person themselves, but there's also like military moms and military dads and military wives and military husbands and military kids you know, could you get into that niche and make it even more narrow when it comes to sports and hobbies? Um, could you, let's just see here, instruments. Let's just say you wanted to get even more niche. Or might you take on strings or the brass section, right? And you decide that you're going to make incredible designs with, you know, tubas, trumpets, saxophones, or puzzles, Maybe you're just going to say, what type of puzzle can I get into? And you realize that thousands upon thousands and thousands of people are into crossword puzzles. And you know you can start making designs that look like or are inspired by crossword puzzles. You could add a slogan. Remember takes three words that created an empire? Do you remember that? Remember this guy right here? were selling t-shirts door-to-door -door in college dormitories it wasn't very fruitful <laughs> but all of a sudden they looked at their living room wall and they had a picture of Jake up there and they added the slogan life is good end of story life is now very very good for them and also mash up niches what do I mean by mashing up a niche well you could mash up quilting with birds you know like you could have shapes of birds that are filled with quilting patterns and all of a sudden you've kind of covered two niches you have covered people who love quilts and you love people who love birds and it is as easy as that you could take the puzzle niche and you can say i'm going to come up with sayings for grandfathers, grandmothers, great aunts, great uncles, whatever. And I'm going to kind of put funny things in a crossword puzzle format. That's kind of like what a mashup is. Lying on a bicycle, who would have thought, oh, let me pop out and show you the shirt that I'm wearing. 
This is a perfect example of a mashup niche. A lion on a bicycle. I was in East Aurora, New York on a bike ride and we were just taking a break and I see all these t-shirts with animals on bicycles. They didn't know I was looking for a shirt with a lion on top of a bicycle, but they got me because I hadn't seen it anywhere else and I wanted it. So I spent money on it and I spent good money on it. Money I don't normally spend on a t-shirt. But that's the nature of going into a niche market. Now, I am a customer of this amazing company. It's called Dark Cycle. Check them out. I have no affiliation or association with them whatsoever. I just, I found them out quite by accident. But this is a perfect niche target audience, right? Believe me, all of these are copyrighted. You're not going to be able to steal these designs. And why would you want to? But that is how you can mash up niches to come up with something truly unique, even if there's like no proof that anybody is asking for it. All right, let's get back to the slideshow. And when you have the perfect idea, because I cannot tell you how many times I see in Facebook groups, somebody have the most amazing idea, right? And everyone that they share it with, most of the people are just like very supportive and say, yes, that is a wonderful idea. Good luck. Some of those people are going to take that idea. They're going to duplicate it. And all of a sudden it's not going to be so niche anymore. So if you take the time to find a niche that is worth pursuing, please keep it to yourself until you get it off the ground. You may think that, oh, I'm only going to my local craft fair. That's all I do. I just go to the local craft fair or to the school gymnasium and I set up my stuff and I sell it. Well, your customer has a phone and can shop, see if it isn't $5 cheaper to have it shipped to their door. And they do it. You do it. I do it. We all do it. We're all trying to save money somehow. And if you tell everyone you struck gold and you put it out on Facebook groups, all it takes is a few people and they will copy that design. They will multiply it. And then all of a sudden it will be saturated and they will sell it cheaper, right? Because that's what they do. They will sell it cheaper. All right, let's recap. Starting a sublimation video series. The first video in the series was about sole proprietorship versus DBA versus LLC. That video is done. It will be linked at the end of this video, and it will also be in the description. Just open up the show notes. Niche selection video. That's number two. This is it. It is done. You just watched it. That, thank you so much for joining me. The next video that is going to come out in this series is tips for business names and logos. Because the fourth video is all about paperwork. And finally, in video number five, we are going to be going into general liability insurance. So if that is something that you want to learn, make sure you click that cue to subscribe. Right, guys, I do hope that this has been beneficial. If you want to stick around, I am going to tell you about when it dawned on me that I had a niche and I had no idea that is coming up next. Um, but if you don't want to watch that, this is the end of this video. Until next time, guys, we will see you later. When did it dawn on me that I had a niche way back when and I didn't even know it? Yes, I was in fact buying grapes. There was a grape farmer in northern New York who would come to this one farmer's market only on Saturdays and you had to get there to stand in line for these grapes. I mean, I know, ridiculous, right? Imagine standing in line for grapes. But I'm telling you, you have never tasted anything like these grapes. This was the scene for this place, all right? I get up early around 6.30, just get out of bed to get down to this farmer market at seven o'clock. You get there, all the other farmers are there setting up their stands, poles are going up, tents are going up, and little by little, people are standing in line at this one little car spot. And about a half hour later, this little car comes rolling down the alley 
bees are following this car. That is like how sweet and intense these grapes are. Like the car is coming and there are bees <laughs> swarming all around it. The car pulls into its parking space, opens the back door, takes out one table, opens the trunk, and starts stacking them on the table. And as I'm getting up to be, like, I'm like 12th in line, and as I'm moving up, the bees are getting worse and worse, because the closer you get to the table, the worse it is. But it just hit me, like lightning. That was me, in my Sundance, in one little parking space, with one little table, with very little inventory. That's when it dawned on me. I had a great item that people knew where to find. I had that customer base. Work was so easy. It was so easy. And this grape farmer, like, this is it. He was pulling in an hour later than everyone else. He, he would sell out within a few hours and got to go enjoy the rest of the day um, while everybody else was still there trying to sell their fruit that you can essentially buy anywhere. I could have bought grapes right across the aisle at the other farmer's tent, but those were grapes that I could get anywhere. I could get them at my local store. I could get them at every single booth at that farmer's market. But I got my butt out of bed early, stood in line, risked being stung by bees, paid way more money for these grapes that nobody else had. No doubt that farmer understood the riches are in the niches. All right, guys, I hope that this has shined some light on you. If this video has helped you in any way, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. Happy sublimating, everyone. Bye.